Today, when you purchase a smart light bulb, you have to first look at the box and see what standard it uses. It could be Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Z-Wave, Bluetooth, Thread, or another technology. Then you have to figure out if you have a hub that supports that technology, and then you have to check and see that the hub supports connection to platforms like Amazon. And that's just so you can know if you can control it by voice. And I haven't even talked about figuring out what features the bulb has. Then you have to actually buy the product, bring it home, set it up in the Hubs app, and then go into all these other apps like Google Home or Amazon or Smart Things to get things connected and working in the ways you'd like. It's just too friggin' hard. And the truth is that because of the upcoming Matter standard, anything you're buying right now could be a pretty big mistake. That's because the industry is shifting quickly and the first Matter products will hit the market in the latter half of 2022. As Matter is released, there will be products that will be updated to work with Matter and then there will be products that will be left behind. Stuff left behind without an update will still work for now, but you will find less options for using them as time marches on. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and I'm going to automate your future a little bit today by breaking down a huge change that's coming. Check all the chapters in today's video because I'm answering lots of your questions on Matter and you guys asked a lot of great questions. So on that note, what I did is I created a Q&A document of all your questions on Matter. You can download it for free on our shop.automatelife.net site. So check that out in the links in the description below and feel free to buy me a coffee or pick up a shirt while you're there too. So what is Matter? Well. The matter standard is more complex than this explanation, but we gotta start somewhere. For the average consumer, it can be called the attempted simplification of the smart home industry. Terms like Zigbee, Z-Wave, the many hubs, and most of the complexity surrounding how products work will apparently be simplified and standardized. This is because massive companies like Amazon, Google, Samsung, Ikea, Signify, the Zigbee Alliance, and approximately 230 total companies have come together and decided they can make more money by making it simpler for all of us to build a smart home. Enter Matter, where any Matter certified product will have the Matter logo on it. And that in turn is supposed to mean that the product will just work with other Matter devices in your home. That's not entirely true though, and I'll get to why. I think the easiest way to explain Matter is like this. Matter uses all of the existing technology in the bottom layers of software and hardware in devices you have today. It's really just the top layer. That's the layer that faces you and me or the consumers. And in a lot of cases, this will show up to us in the apps we use as a QR code on products and on packaging. From a technology standpoint, Matter is the combination of a number of communication technologies that were used to create smart products in the past. It's also a combination of technologies like the blockchain and encryption, IP and data models developed in the past. All stuff you and I don't really care about. But a Matter smart home device, like a light bulb, will have to communicate with what's called a Matter controller, and that's how signals will be passed between things like sensors, lights, switches, plugs, TVs, thermostats, blinds, and the controllers themselves to make automation happen. For example, the lights turning on when you enter a room and off again when you leave. Now, what is a Matter controller? Sadly, it's really just another name for a hub. So I know you thought, oh, I don't need a hub anymore, but you do. A matter controller is the central processing device for your smart home. You can have multiple and they will all follow the software you're using with them. For example, you can have many Google Home speakers and it's likely they will all be matter controllers. They will all use the Google Home app to execute voice commands and automations like routines, but they will use the Matter standard to connect to those things like your light bulbs. Even better than that, you can have multiple Matter controllers from multiple companies, so there's no problem using an Amazon Echo speaker 
next to a HomePod mini from Apple or next to a Nest Wi-Fi and actually all at the same time. Now I just finished saying that matter is a combination of a number of communication technologies. What I mean by that is best explained by how matter works. So for example, Bluetooth is used for device setup. Then Wi-Fi and or Ethernet or Thread will be used to communicate with the smart de device thereafter. This introduces one of the big differences we'll experience with those matter controllers, as each one may or may not include Thread, which sounds a lot like a hub, doesn't it? The best example of this comes from Amazon's current matter commitment. Today, Amazon says that many of their Echoes, their Echo Dots, Echo Plus, Echo Studio, and Echo Show devices will become Matter controllers near to day one of Matter's initial release. However, the list of Matter controllers with Thread currently sits at exactly one device, and that's this Echo Fourth Generation, which will receive an update to allow its Zigbee radio to be used with both Zigbee and Thread at the same time. This is great news for Echo Fourth Gen owners, but leaves options for other folks limited to non-thread devices, at least for the time being. I'm sure we'll see Amazon come out with other speakers that have thread, but the same situation shows up with Google, Apple, and Samsung, and will likely be a problem on most existing hubs. That is, until it becomes a common inclusion on more devices which means Thread is still going to be a bit of a confusing thing for us, the consumers. Now, one of the biggest differences we'll see is in how you set up a device and then how it's managed. So today, if you were to set up a Tuya light bulb, you would plug it in, go into the Smart Life app, add it there, and then once you're done with that process, you would then integrate it with Google, Amazon, or SmartThings, or all of them. But you have to do that one step at a time. The fact is, it's many steps and it's messy to manage all those integrations after the fact. Today for the video, Google gave me a great graphic to use which shows you quite a bit. Now, notice how the bulb automatically pops up on the Android phone. Then a QR code is scanned which is a requirement of Matter products. From there, the bulb is named and the user gets to pick the app that they will use with the bulb. This happens because Google's phone is a Matter controller or at least something that can set up Matter devices. You will have other Matter controllers and other apps in your home, so your options will be likely more than is shown in this graphic, but this should or could eliminate so many apps from your phone in short order as well as make it easier to move over to whatever app or controller you'd like to use at any time. What isn't clear here yet is how we would migrate between Matter controllers. However, Amazon has talked to me about what is called their commissionable endpoint feature. That's a really long name for what is a really important feature of Matter. See, it includes a feature called multi-admin, which means that any smart home device, like the light bulb I've been talking about to this point, can be controlled by multiple smart home systems at the same time. There are a number of advantages of Matter that we've already talked about, but there are three big advantages, no, four big advantages that I see over and above those. Security and privacy are both going to be improved here with the adoption of technology like the blockchain. Plus, there are components I've been told within the standard that allow us to use better encryption like WPA3. That one I can't guarantee, but it is my understanding today. Thread in itself is a pretty big advantage because it features lower latency than Zigbee and Z-Wave and it has the same features of being a low power mesh network. Now when you combine those features with the power and speed of Wi-Fi and Ethernet connectivity, you have a pretty good breadth of connection technologies that should fit most situations around your home. One of the big selling features for Matter is that it allows local connectivity. 
This means that your smart devices will work without the internet being available. Local connection will both speed up the responses of your requests and your automations and increase reliability. And in fact, Amazon has told us about local voice control options coming to their Matter controllers, which would be an amazing feature on those smart speakers. And one of the things I am the most excited about is that companies can stop focusing on updating apps or learning about these other communication technologies and they can stop focusing on development of integrations with different platforms. Instead, what we should see shortly after the first few products come out with Matter certification is that companies begin to have room internally to really innovate. This has been a problem in the industry and I would say that innovation has slowed down, which has given rise to things like Tuya. Not that Tuya is a bad thing, but just that companies have become reliant on systems like the one Tuya has built and have therefore spent less time building us the features that we want. I see the same problem with many of the larger apps that we use, and when I think about the horsepower needed to maintain these integration systems, it's clearly a drain on the resources of those companies, and while we can all just say, okay, they should just spend more money and get it done, I think every one of us knows that's not how companies work. So I'm excited to see next year and the year after that, and I think you should start getting excited about that too. So when will Matter actually matter? Well, as I said earlier, the first generation of Matter certified devices should come to us in late 2022, or at least that's the last promise we've been given. And while Matter has been delayed even just a few days ago, uh, you know, there are some products that were released or announced to be released at this year's CES 2022. Those products are stated to be launching this year and with Matter. And another component of the launch is in existing smart products in your home because if you had to go out and repurchase everything in your home, then it would be a very long time for matter to, well, matter. So there are some existing products that will get an update to become matter compatible. In fact, a number of companies have stated that on day one of matter's release, they wanna be ready with their own updates. Belkin and GE have been really clear about their desires on this. I already told you that Amazon was updating many of their speakers to be Matter controllers and I think we will see that go back pretty reliably into the third generation of all of their speakers, maybe further. Eero has Thread in their routers too and Amazon has said that these will become active and work with Matter too. Everything else by Amazon like Ring and Blank and Amazon Basics gear are still up in the air which is a little scary with Ring. Now Google has been prepared for this for a while and they've come forward and said many of their speakers will be Matter controllers. Something most people don't know though is that they have thread in many of their existing speakers and even in their Nest Wi-Fi router. All of those features and supposedly routines that work with sensors will come out soon after Matter's release, but this is Google so <laughs> who really knows. Apple's been a bit coy about their exact response to this, but the thread on the HomePod mini tells me that that one's a Matter controller. The Apple TV and the iPad should get Matter controller updates going back a few generations and we know that the Home app should already have Matter support since it was supposed to get that in iOS 15. I've also heard that they will be following the QR code system, which may eliminate the need for separate HomeKit certification. Now that's not confirmed 100% by any means, but I would also expect their phones to work in the same way we saw the Google phone working earlier today. Samsung actually gave me specific wording around what they would be focusing on with your current hubs in your home. They told me directly that the V2, V3, and AOTech hubs will be updated to Matter controllers, but what's not clear is if the thread radio will be enabled or turned on on the V3 and AOTech hubs. I feel positive about that happening, but no guarantees. SmartThings has also stated that many of their other products at CES will be either Matter controllers or Matter compatible, and that includes their family hub fridge and their TVs, and I would expect their phones to work just like Google's too. Philips Hue has said their bridges will be updated to Matter, but not Thread. Acara has stated the M1S and M2 hubs will receive Matter updates, 
Plus, they've shown us two thread-based sensors that should work with many matter controllers. And Eve has been showcasing, silently or quietly, uh, integration with Google Nest speakers with thread in advance of the matter standards release. And when you're watching a lot of companies come out with thread devices instead of Wi-Fi devices, that's a big trend that uh, should work with all of these matter controllers with thread. And the other big trend I've noticed is that companies are moving away from Zigbee, Z-Wave and Bluetooth and into Wi-Fi or thread. Lots of companies are using Tuya to create Wi-Fi based products that kind of look like some of their older ones. As I did my comparison of the eight smart power bars, this is something that became really apparent with companies like Jasco turning away from their Z-Wave lineup and really just getting a Tuya product and putting their brand on it. So what I think will happen in a lot of cases, and I can't promise this just yet, but I think a lot of companies are ready to give you these new features and ways to manage your smart home shortly after Matter's release. So how do we actually prepare for matter? The good news is there's not a lot physically for you to do to prepare for matter except to stop purchasing from companies that haven't committed to matter and haven't been really clear on what they will be doing. I'm personally starting to worry about what Amazon is doing with some of their sub brands like Ring and Blank and I'm also uh, really unsure about anything to you right now. The reason I say that is because Every company that buys a Tuya product has had to pay for the different integrations as a separate fee. So if a vendor wants their product to work with Amazon or Google, they have to pay for that. If they want it to work with SmartThings or to have Siri shortcuts integration, they have to pay for that. So I'm expecting Tuya to have a charge for those companies to convert existing products to be certified with Matter. And that's if it's even possible with their product. A lot of the companies who have sold you to your products, you know, like the white label stuff that really doesn't have a company name behind it or a brand that you can talk to, they won't have reasons to update your devices. I don't recommend those a lot anyways, but right now I'm going to tell you to stay far, far away from those unless you're okay being completely left behind. The other thing I can tell you is that there are a lot of device types that won't be addressed in version 1.0 of Matter. And so I actually don't think it makes a lot of sense to hold off on those kinds of purchases. Things like cameras just won't be there in version 1, so you don't have to hold off on something like that. Otherwise, your home is just really going to convert if you have the right products and you will begin to use the Matter system as companies roll out their new software and or firmware updates to their devices. The initial feeling for most of us will be to hit that update button come September on, you know, any of those software or firmware updates. However, I would suggest that you make sure you have a matter controller update happening first. I don't think companies will break things, but I could see some mistakes happening with such wide sweeping changes. As such, I would make sure that I had Google, Amazon, Apple, or Samsung, or your hub already working with matter before I start hitting those updates on my firmwares for my different end devices. And that leads into my list of disadvantages of Matter. And for those of you who already have smart homes or are building them out, I think you're gonna wanna check out that list, which is up on screen now. That video will get you or keep you from getting caught by what I see or some of the downfalls that are coming. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.